Are you ready to explore a classic TV series called The Edge of Night? This show has lots of interesting, surprising, and sad facts waiting for you. When did you first start watching the show? What makes it stand out in the world of TV? Share your favorite memory or personal story about The Edge of Night in the comment entrance below. We'd love to hear from you. The Edge of Night, a television series that premiered in 1956, is a gripping drama set in the fictional city of Monticello. The show revolves around the lives of the residents, particularly the legal and criminal elements of the Kamalim Trinity. The plot unfolds through a mix of crime-solving, courtroom drama, and personal conflicts. The main characters include Mike Carr, a dedicated district attorney determined to uphold justice, and his wife Nancy, who often finds herself entangled in the city's intrigue. As the series progresses, viewers are introduced to a diverse cast of supporting characters, including criminals, detectives, and other members of the legal profession. Throughout its run, The Edge of Night garnered critical acclaim and several awards for its innovative storytelling and compelling performances. It became known for its intricate plot lines and unexpected twists, keeping audiences on the edge of their seats. Over the years, the show evolved, addressing social issues and exploring the complexities of human nature. Despite changes in the television landscape, The Edge of Night remained a beloved and influential series until its conclusion. The Edge of Night, a TV series that began in 1956, featured actors who later appeared in other notable works. One such instance is a Best Supporting Actress Oscar winner who guest starred in Murder, she wrote in 1984. Others who shared this distinction include Teresa Wright, Claire Trevor, and Shirley Jones. In 1980, The Edge of Night's potential lead role as Emma Lamtreline in The Blue Lagoon was offered to an actress who declined the offer. The role ultimately went to Brooke Shields. Despite the Kamalamtran perception of soap operas as primarily appealing to women, The Edge of Night defied this stereotype. Surprisingly, about 50% of its viewership comprised men during its run. Originally contracted for only six episodes of Full House in 1987, she impressed audiences and secured a full-time role. Initially slated as Danny's co-host with a single-date storyline, her character evolved when she fell in love with Jesse and eventually married him. She is one of four actresses to have won an Oscar for portraying a labor scene in a film. The others are Louise Reiner for The Good Earth, Mary Astor for The Great Lie, and Brenda Fricker for My Left Foot. She is the mother of Isabella Ginelli and Olivia Ginelli. The Edge of Night, a television series that debuted in 1956, served as the starting point for Marsha Cross's career. In the early 1980s, some of ABIC's affiliates aired the show overnight to test its potential as a late-night series. This move came as the daytime ratings of the show were declining, leading many stations to preempt it for local or syndicated program eliminatory. A notable event in the show's history occurred in 1961 when Teal Ames' character was killed off. The response was so overwhelming that CBS had to address the issue the next day, with Ames and John Larkin reassuring viewers that only the character, not the actress, had died. The Edge of Night, a TV series from 1956, has some interesting connections. She's only five years older than Laura Inness, who played her daughter on ER. Additionally, she's just eight years older than Julian Moore, who portrayed her daughter in Laws of Attraction. Furthermore, she's only nine years older than Joanne Wally, who played her daughter in Jackie Bouvier Kennedy Onassis. Most of the CBS-era episodes of The Edge of Night are believed to be lost, which is a Kamalantran issue for older programs recorded on videotape. In the movie, the stars fell on Henrietta, her real-life daughter, Francesca Eastwood, played her youngest child. The Edge of Night, a TV series from 1956, almost saw Fisher in the role of Jill Taylor on Home Improvement. However, Patricia Richardson stepped in due to a lack of chemistry between Tim Allen and Fisher. Irving Vendig, creator of the show, initially wrote for the radio drama Perry Mason. The idea for The Edge of Night stimulated from his work, but Wright's issues with Perry Mason's creator led to changes. Originally titled The Edge of Darkness, it aimed to adapt the radio drama for television. Despite its origins, The Edge of Night took on its own identity, navigating legal dramas and mysteries. Fisher's near casting on home improvement didn't detract from the show's success, which lasted for years. Debuting in 1956 as a TV show, The Edge of Night quickly caught people's attention with its interesting story and strong characters. Even though facing challenges and being excluded from Hollywood history, she kept going, working in live TV and movies during the lively 1950s. 
In 1999, she played the mom of Richard Kiley's character in Blue Moon, showing her ability to play various roles. It's interesting that despite being eight months younger, she convincingly portrayed the motherly role, proving her skill in bringing characters to life on screen. Jump to 2008, and she made another important contribution to the industry. Recognizing the need for support in the often difficult world of child actors, she started a support group called Been There, Done That. Through this, she gave a safe space for young talents to share their experiences and deal with the unique challenges of the entertainment industry. Her impact goes beyond just her on-screen performances. She made a lasting impression on the industry, not only through her acting skill, but also through her kindness and dedication to supporting her fellow artists. The Edge of Night might have been where she started, but her influence goes beyond those early days. Her story is one of persistence, talent, and a common treatment to making a difference in others' lives. Starting her career as a print model at the age of 11, she quickly gained attention in the industry with her impressive presence. However, her journey took a different direction when she became a mother to Sean Emilantrit. Despite the joys of being a mom, her love for the stage remained strong. Just nine months after giving birth, she successfully returned to the spotlight, captivating audiences in the Broadway production of The Tender Trap. Her versatility didn't stop there. Besides Broadway, she explored the world of audio, lending her voice to the captivating stories of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater. Her ability to seamlessly switch between different mediums showcased her talent and dedication, leaving a memorable impression wherever she went. Through her roles, she embodied strength, grace, and a timeless elegance that resonated with audiences everywhere. Whether appearing in magazines or on stage, she brought a captivating presence that couldn't be ignored. In every project, she added a unique touch and a steadfast calm treatment to her craft, solidifying her status as a true icon of her time. Her influence continues to inspire generations of performers who follow in her footsteps, showcasing the lasting significance of her work. The Edge of Night, a 1956 TV series, holds a significant place in American daytime soap opera history. It was associated with the Screen Actors Guild, showcasing its involvement in the entertainment industry. Notably, The Edge of Night stands among a handful of American daytime soap operas that transitioned between television networks during its broadcast. Only Search for Tomorrow and Passions share this distinction. At the beginning of the show, viewers were greeted with the skyline of Cincinnati, Ohio, as seen from Kentucky. This choice was deliberate, as Cincinnati housed the headquarters of Procter & Gamble, the show's primary sponsor throughout its long tenure. The series, with its captivating storylines and memorable characters, remains a hallmark of daytime television drama.